There we go. Okay. <laughs> Maria, thank you for taking the time. Yeah, thanks for, for having us or me, as I said. <laughs> We're really happy to see you in action here, in live Zoom action. Yeah, almost really real watching your life. Reaction. It's crazy. Yeah, almost. Wow, isn't it? Yeah, yes. no, thank you so much. Um, I, I guess we should give Connor a shout out um, for, for hooking this up for us as well, even though he kind yes. of disappeared before this. He's got COVID at the moment, <laughs> the poor dude. So, so oh thank you, God. Connor, for hooking this up. Appreciate it. Yes, thank you. Um, so awesome. what's what's going on? Yeah, I now you're in Germany. <laughs> yes. Full transparency. At the beginning of the reaction to the song, I didn't do my research. I thought you guys were from Ireland for whatever reason. And he tried to do an Irish <laughs> accent. And then absolutely <laughs> so I did this idiot. terrible Irish accent. <laughs> oh my god, that's yeah. so funny. How did you come up with this? That's I, so I just, funny. I just come up with shit in his head. There's yeah, there's a lot going on in there. Whereabouts <laughs> oh, in Germany that's are you? So funny. Uh, we're all from Berlin, so oh, oh cool. nice. Yes, yeah, it's yes. Beautiful. Uh, that's that's so funny though. Like Ireland, yeah. I don't even. I haven't even been there. Like just once at, at the airport, but I don't even know. Like they have a really strong accent. So, I mean, maybe my German might sound similar at some point. I don't know. You don't. I don't know how it accent, sounds to though. others. Yeah, oh, you can't. Thank you. <laughs> you can't pick it up in the in the accent in the in the in the songs for sure. So. Yeah, I don't know. I guess uh, I just I'm made just that giving up. you an excuse here. He's an idiot. That's, <laughs> that's all we're going to come from him today. Though. Oh, that would have been so funny if you just randomly talked Irish the entire interview and then we we're all like, hey, like what's, God, what, I wish that had been the case. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> because, like, what's with the weird Australian uh, Irish guy? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, it's awesome. But yeah, we're here in Berlin. It's currently like 10 p.m. Yeah, 10 p.m. Oh, thank you. Wait, are you a night owl or a morning person? I'm a night owl completely. Yeah. <laughs> Most musicians we talk to seem to be night owls. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I wish I was normal, but I I work at night, like three a.m. is my prime time. It's it's. Oh no annoying, way! But... Jeez, I, can't yeah. even comprehend I don't that. know why. Yeah, I don't know why either. Maybe, maybe it's, it's also you're still young. Wait, maybe when age catches up to you, you'll need more sleep. Like the rest of the yeah band. i was thinking yeah. about if the blue lights are actually influencing it because like i grew up more with like smartphone and tv and computer so i don't know maybe that might influence it because you don't get tired when you're in front of a computer or phone. having said yeah. that johnny's almost 40 and he's a night owl too yeah <laughs> okay yeah maybe I... we're just different yeah i have a bad habit of just staying up way later than i should and yeah and then i'm just a mess the next day so late for things he's grumpy <laughs> i'm not grumpy <laughs> i'm happy anyway tell us what's going on in the world of future palace we discovered you guys on this channel and oh man we were just blown away yeah you without trying to make blow, blow up your ego too much you've become one of our favorite <laughs> vocalists by far you've mm. got this range that just oh blows us away every time oh thank you so much honestly oh my god it doesn't seem real right now. It's so funny because I like we didn't do many interviews or anything um, because when we started out, we're not we're not an old band. Like we don't exist for a long time. Yeah. I think we started out officially 2019. So um, and that's when almost the entire pandemic happened. So we didn't really experience much yet. So it's yeah, so course. nice to get like real feedback. Um, like even with, when it's on a camera, it's it's so nice to see that because you don't really you're just in your own bubble. I feel like for sure. So it's it's so so nice to hear this. Um, so what's happening for us right now? Uh, a lot of things. So we have written our second album, or um, and we're gonna release it on June 10th this year. So I'm really really excited for this, especially because of the entire situation. Like our old album Escape, which was also our first album ever. Was that 2020? Uh, we could never. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. September 2020 uh, is when we released it and um, we never were able to play it live or like do Crazy. anything. So, uh, wow. yeah, it seems like we're doing it for ourselves, even though we see like numbers online. But it seems so, yeah, like so funny to not see real people and um, experience like feedback, as I said. So it's so nice to have like reaction channels like you guys uh, to see how people feel when they watch these mu music videos or songs and um, yeah, what we're doing with them. It's, it's so nice to see for us. Have you been able to play any live shows yet? 
Uh, we did one tour in 2020 with a band called Flash Forward. We were their support band. And okay. um, that was actually our first ever tour we ever had as a band together. Oh, wow. And our last, because right after that, <laughs> the pandemic happens. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, crazy, really... crazy couple of years. So crazy. Yeah, I think for everyone, but especially when you didn't do much before, it's super weird. It's just so... Yeah, it's crazy to now sit here and people know me randomly. It's funny to me because <laughs> like I didn't see it happening. Yeah, really. I wonder if that would be your perspective on music and, and touring and just releasing releasing music is different because it's almost all you've known. Whereas other bands that might have been established for a few years, they've had to mm -hmm. adjust to being in a pandemic. Whereas you kind of launched into a pandemic as the start of the band. Yeah. I wonder if that's influenced yes. the way you kind of interact with people and, and the music you're creating. That's a good point. I don't know. I think one example would be we don't know how our, most of our songs work live. So we, <laughs> we played one of them live. Um, that was Ghost Chapter. I'm not sure if you know the song, but it has like a part that f would work perfectly with a crowd. And we tried that once and we knew, yeah, that works, but we didn't have uh, similar moments like this because we couldn't play a lot of songs. So we couldn't really figure out which one works great live and which one doesn't. So we ended up just writing what we want and what we feel like. And maybe at the end of the day, I will stand on stage and be like, okay, that's super exhausting, but whatever. <laughs> it's still yeah. fucking funny we'll figure it out, to yeah. do. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. There will be one way. So maybe we didn't have any borders while writing. We just did what we really felt like. Cool. And think, on the yeah. on the singles that, that you release, is there this four or five now that have been released uh, from the album? Um, wait, I need to from check the, that out. <laughs> wait, that's Paradise was the first one. Paradise. Then we did. Uh, uh, Flames then is we the did Heads one. Up. Heads Up. Yeah, yeah, Flames and A World in Tears. So that's far. right. Yeah. So yeah. it is four. Exactly. Yeah. Between those four singles. There's so many different sounds, like they're almost like different genres between each song, you know, like um, I feel like Paradise was a, a good sort of like mix of the heavy and the, the clean and all that sort of stuff. And then World in Tears was like a more pop dance orientated. And then Flames just came out and just kicked everyone's faces in. Mm. So, <laughs> oh, so really you're, yeah, you watched it already. So I, I don't see your reaction. Yet, yeah, so we are really excited. <laughs> we're launching the reaction when we put this up. So yeah. the, uh, okay. you'll have to wait and see. I'm oh, so sorry. I'm excited. OK, that's so funny. Yeah, that, I, yeah, that is that is funny to hear um, because when we were writing it, we weren't really much reflecting on this. One thing we knew was that A World in Tears was really different than mm -hmm. the other songs from this new album, but also our former album. So Escape was pretty much soft compared to what we now wrote. Yeah. We didn't have like we had one song with screams on there and then another one as a feature with screams. So it was pretty soft compared. And we never wanted to give ourselves any borders when it comes to creativity and writing, because we never really identified as anything. We just started doing music, had like a few inspirations that we liked as bands. And then we started writing and then um, we just did the same thing with Run, with the new album. We were mm. like sitting there like, let's do, I don't know. It feels like we want to do something heavier. I was just trying to scream on a demo and I was like sending it to the boys. And I was like, this is so embarrassing. Like I sound like a dying sheep. I don't know. <laughs> and then, uh, then they, they re re um, replied with like, yeah, that's sick. I'm like, what? Really? Should yeah. I try this now? Best dying <laughs> so sheep I've ever heard. Random. <laughs> <laughs> More sheep should die Thank in you. that case. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but like, it, I can't believe that you've only really just started screaming for this album because you sound flawless like you have such range and such like you fill up so much space with your screams like it's fantastic where what was the inspiration or do you have any inspirations in that vocal space to lead you to start screaming because there there seems to be a few more female heavy vocalists coming out there and you've just inserted mm. yourself right at the top there which is awesome oh my god <laughs> it's so crazy to hear because actually uh with my screaming i'm not even that comf like secure or like I would say I'm more comfortable with my clean singing because actually I learned a lot about it after, okay. like for all these years but I was never a full-on screamer like hard vocalist so I'm always like oh it's okay like I can do it but like whatever like I never took it like really seriously and uh, actually I started doing it when I was 14 so I'm now 24 
that's a long time actually I didn't even notice <laughs> uh, and I just randomly did it because I was in a band back then and they were like yeah let's do screams that's so much more like emotional and then I was listening to um, a girl showed me Flyleaf back then oh Flyleaf and, uh, is so great yeah and she just randomly showed me the song I'm so sick and she's like this is so cool like this I wish I could do this that's what the girl said and I was like I'm just gonna try this and I just tried it at home at my mom's place and then I remember she came back home she was like I was hearing you down the street like don't ever do that again <laughs> <laughs> sounded like someone was like, in oh trouble <laughs> so I was like how do people rehearse this stuff when you like when you don't have a rehearsal room so yeah I've been learning it like not actually learning it but I was trying out when I was already a teenager to scream but I was never that serious about it. And then I just kind of was like, okay, so I learned this once, why not try it again as a tool for your music to get better at it? So uh, inspirations would be, actually, I don't even listen to that many female um, metal bands, female fronted metal okay. bands, actually. Um, not saying they're bad. I was just never actively listening to them. For example, like Spirit Box is amazing. Uh, I later found out about them actually. Yeah. It's funny. And, um, but I was a big fan of Architects, for example. I was really looking like, I think he's an amazing, talented uh, vocalist. Yeah, and his name is incredible. Mostly like, yes. I, and I just loved his emotion. And I, I think he just sounds different to many other vocalists and I think mostly I was listening to his, his sound and also a lot of Bring Me the Horizon actually and uh, 21 Pilots also who also did like screams back then <laughs> still. Yeah, cool. and um, so I always loved um, a bit of scream in a song so I covered these for like for fun and then later on I was like okay let's try it on my own I'm not sure if I can do it full on but now I kind of do it. <laughs> it was that happened. something that your band members, was there any hesitation with it or were they excited to go into a heavier space? Um, they loved to go to a heavier space, especially our drummer. Um, actually, when they started out, they were looking for a, a male singer, uh, which is pretty funny because yeah, now I'm there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and they wanted to do heavier stuff as well. So, um, yeah, we didn't do any heavy stuff. There wasn't a male singer. It was really different from what they were planning, but it still worked. And now we are kind of back to what they were thinking about back then. Like, so they were always looking to make more hard, like metal music. They, um, our guitar player used to be in a post hardcore band before as well. So they always did like really heavy music. And um, I also did like a few screams. So it was just familiar to us. Okay. It wasn't something new. It wasn't a hesitation. We all are familiar with like metal music and listen to it privately as well. Yeah. But going from like the last album to this new stuff, it's not like you've, it's, it's a huge leap in terms of, you know, adding that extra element, but it doesn't sound that far removed. Like it still sounds like you guys, the hooks are still absolutely enormous. Um, mm -hmm. So I think it's just, if anything, all it's going to do is just widen your audience and the, the people that, will sort of connect with your music yeah maybe i mean it makes sense from the label we're signed at <laughs> actually it was yeah. more funny that we were signed to them with the first album because it was pretty soft um but uh, yeah it's scary when you never had an audience before then you build a little audience with your first album and then you start doing something more aggressive so like everyone, like our families would be like, okay, that's too hard now. <laughs> like now we're going to stop listening. Now we're stepping out. Um, but actually, yeah, as you said, it did the opposite. It just gave us a bigger audience now because most people who listen to us actually already liked heavier music or even as, as I was feared, like my, my, my family stepping out of the music or anything. Uh, it's the opposite as well. They are like, I, I mean, I didn't like screams before, but listening to it in your music makes it different to me. <laughs> so it's funny yeah. to oh, that's awesome. see that we get people into heavy music now, even like some of them. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's a big, it's a bigger audience now, I think as well, but it was not a plan. Talk to me. You said before about how you're adjusting to like how the music's going to play live as opposed to when you record it. You guys are a three-piece, correct? Yeah, exactly. Oh, we're <laughs> going to ask the bass. Yeah, everyone asks the bass yeah. question. Because the bass, the bass is, a, is a very prominent <laughs> thing in your sound that you can really hear it quite heavily. Who <laughs> who programs that and what's the plan for that live? Oh, and man. That's so funny. That's players? like... <laughs> 
<laughs> We've <laughs> everyone, said it so many times. <laughs> everyone makes fun about this with us. It's so funny. Um, I'm always, my, my question would always be, why is no one asking where our piano player is? <laughs> because like in songs as maybe, we have like pianos and stuff and nobody ever asks, where's your pian like pianist? Where, That's a good where point actually. Yeah, <laughs> but um, I think it's the bass is in every song consistently. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense, of course. Yeah, sure. It is a really. It's not that. It's not that we don't like bass players at all. It's not that. It's just we were three people. We found each other, and uh, we wanted to make it work quickly. And um, all of us love the instrument, of course. That's why we have it so prominently in our song. Um, but we just wanted to make it work quickly and there wasn't anyone who was fitting perfectly for us in this group constellation so we just started doing it and then in the studio we just did the bass like with our producer together with the new album um our guitar player played the entire bass actually um so they had a bass there and then they tried out different sounds that was really cool that's why it's so heavy sounding it's like a really mm. little tuning and stuff yeah um it was really interesting to watch and yeah, live so far, we don't have anyone playing with us, but actually we would not be against having someone just for live gigs in the future, if oh. that ha happens at some point. But for the tour that are happening now, all the tours, we are just the three of us and the uh, bass is coming from the PA boxes, yeah, the just yeah, like the yeah. rappers do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to hear some rap on this album then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, a little bit already in flames, but yeah. it's not really rap, but <laughs> the, you, you yeah. just also touched on the work with the producer, the sound, the production on all the singles so far has been so strong and so it's consistent. Huge. Is that yeah. something, is that something you worked with before? Um, can you talk about the recording process and what the goal was with that? Yes. Yeah, so we worked with the exact same producers as last time. So cool. we were going to Sados recordings. That's, um, the company or the studio of the singer and guitarist of NSOK. Okay. Oh, yeah. So oh, oh, yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we recorded the first album with him already and we had a really good experience. So he did our first ever songs and we were like, yeah, that's perfect. It's almost like he's a band member because he gives so much um, elements to it. Mm. Or let's say for the first songs we did, he gave us like a really new perspective as well, which was really fun and good for us. And then, um, yeah, we wanted to go there again because the experience was really good with the first album. And also we live really near, like really close, like in Germany, it's different cities, but still it's a really short drive there. Yeah. And um, there's also a second producer who worked on many songs. So it was six songs with Chris and the other six with Julian Boyka. Hi, Julian, if you're watching this. <laughs> um, also really good producer. So that's funny because um, we have like, they, they didn't even listen to these songs when we were writing them. So one were like only with one guy and the others were only with the other guy, which was funny. So it makes sense that some of them have almost like a little different touch to them. For yeah, example, Heads sense. Up. Yeah, Heads Up and A World in Tears were produ produced, or let's say written, produced, like the masters were done by Chris, by one guy, but then the, the recording process and stuff like that were, were done differently, mm. or separately, separately. And um, yeah, like Hats Up and The World in Tears were done with Julian and then Paradise and Flames were done with Chris. And I'm not sure if anyone could tell the difference, but I feel like they have like different elements they put in, in each song, which makes it fun for us because it's, um, yeah, a lot more new elements this time than last time, I would say, like a little more diversity. Yeah, I mm. feel like you can hear, I think Julian stuff seems to be a little bit more pop orientated, a little bit more fun and playful whereas maybe chris has that yes. like edgier heavier that element to him. Edge, yeah for sure exactly yeah. yeah you really got that that was actually really similar to the recording process like with julian we were like really playful and we did like really uh like we were listening to pop music as references or like uh like many different things and sounds and with Chris, it was more like the emotions and it, yeah it's always like a little heavier i feel like so we also decided which songs we want to do with who and um, I think it worked out perfectly. So yeah. I'm really excited for it's everyone to hear the entire album. Yeah, well, even when I was listening to A World in Tears, I was like, this could almost be like a like a heavier Lady Gaga song or something like that in some <laughs> of the elements. Like, um, yeah, it just, it just had that real strong pop sensibility, but it still sounded like mm -hmm. you guys. It was still guitar driven. 
um, very polished, very sort of nice sounding. And I think just having all those different elements on an album uh, and even the nuances in production just gives people something mm. so, so much more excitement listening to it. Hear so many yeah. different things on other listens. I mean, actually, we were a little scared when we released The World in Tears because we were not expecting to now build a metal fan base. Uh, that was nothing we planned or had in our minds because we were just doing music. And um, we were like, okay, we just, the, also the release plan wasn't like completely thought about before. So we were like, yeah, let's do Paradise because that's a sick song. <laughs> we were mm -hmm. like, let's just put it out first. And then Heads Up, also sick song. And then there were like some issues why we had to put A World in Tears right after. And, and I was like, oh my God, everyone is going to be confused as fuck now. <laughs> everyone is going to be <laughs> so, everyone is going to hate us. <laughs> yes, I was like, now everyone is going to hate us because they were expecting like heavy stuff. Um, but yeah, we, we always liked 80 influences. I don't know if you can hear it, probably not, but yeah. in the beginning of the writing process, we had like a lot of 80 sounds. Um, I was personally listening a lot to the new Miley Cyrus album. I'm not sure we if you listen to it. Yeah, yeah we love yes. that album. Yeah. I love that album so well. And I was like, yeah, let's do something similar to this. And I don't know, it just ended up being a little more pop even than that. But we all had like different ideas for this. And uh, we always like having a little bit of 80s influences. It's, we always have like this one 80s song on our album. I don't know. Or hey, like we're down for that. Song. I don't yeah, know how that happened. The 80s <laughs> a, was the best. 80s was a, was, a, was a genre that I'd not just at time where I feel like in hindsight, it's really good. But mm. just after the 80s, everyone was like, oh, what were we thinking? Yeah. But now looking back, there's so many good moments. You yeah, because it's from. so much fun. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, I wish I was there when... It's, it looks awesome and it sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm jealous. I, I was a child, but I was there. But like, I, I remember <laughs> growing up, like listening to like Bon Jovi and Kiss and all that nice. sort of stuff on vinyl, like, and that's before vinyl was a See, that's vinyl. awesome. God, I had to listen to Kesha so TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't knock Kesha. She's a talent. No, she's cool. Yeah, she's cool. It is pretty mind-blowing as, as well, thinking about you're born 97 yeah exactly 1997 good maths yeah nice one bro <laughs> someone's got to be smart in this show. I, uh, sometimes i don't even know that someone <laughs> <laughs> i just ignore the year i was born i'm like oh it's getting further away every year what year was it just for people at home 82 82 <laughs> he really was present for the 80s i was yeah that's okay I was born in the 80s, but just at the end. So I don't really get to, like, I was two. I don't really get to experience my brother. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my both band members are, like, older than me. So I am i shouldn't do that, that many jokes about that. <laughs> anyway. So what, how did you guys come together as a band? Was it just, like, a, they put out a call looking for a vocalist and you auditioned? Or would you know them previously? Uh, that's a fun story. I it's We're probably going to tell the story a lot of times because it's uh, it's also part of the band name, actually. Um, so they were looking for a new vocalist, but not like officially yet. It was actually a mutual friend of ours that we met through and the mutual friend was there from, so they had an old band before with this friend as a singer and they kind of didn't want to do it anymore. And I was in an old band. So it was almost like a weird, um, romance story, you know, like two, both in a relationship and then. Um, Falling in I love from that's afar. Kinda, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's kind of how it felt like it was weird. And then it was like, okay, so should we quit our old bands and then start a new one together? But like, we're going to hurt them. So we had like talks <laughs> with them. And it was so, it was so weird. And then um, our guitar player, Manuel, he started this WhatsApp group called Future Palace because in the future we can be a band here. Uh, That's <laughs> and incredible. later on, that is, we never knew that this would actually be our band name at some point. And now it has a lot more depth than name. Yeah. It makes a lot more sense with our like messages. Um, but at that point it was like, yeah, in the future we're gonna make music together, but now we have to figure out how we're gonna end each band. Yeah. And um, yeah. But thanks to Thomas, the mutual friend at this point, because we were doing a feature. So me and my old band were doing a feature with him. And then while we were writing the song, Manuel was there and he was like playing guitar in it. And we were like, yeah, that works well, like way too good. <laughs> that works way too good. And we all loved the song we did. And then we kind of, yeah, ended up being a band, just the three of us. Oh, that is fun. I like that. That is awesome. So I, be. I saw you, um, you've just recently announced uh, a festival appearance. Is it five? 
Yeah. What's it called again? The five something. Uh, High Five Summerfest and Spring. That's it. Yeah, with a whole bunch yeah. of other Arising Empire bands. Like that label is absolutely yeah. killing it right now. Yeah, I'm always impressed how many bands they get on on things. I didn't even notice when I was looking on it the first time. But then, yeah, like when you analyze who's there, you get to notice, wow, that's a lot of people from my label. I didn't even notice at first. I was looking like the, at the headline, it's like, wow, that's cool. Like a yeah. Vine channel is there. Yeah. And, uh, electric, electric Callboy, as they know. Oh, well done. Like, yeah. The yeah. new name change. Yeah. <laughs> so do you have much, yes. um, have you had much to do with any of the other bands on the label? Or are you looking forward to hanging out with them and getting to meet them? Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm absolutely looking forward to that. I mean, so one band would be NSOK, okay, of course, because we were recording there before we were even signed to the label. Yeah, cool. And we were always, so we were always already doing a connection with each other. And um, yeah, while we were on there, um, another band like Fall to Spring. Yeah, Fall yeah. to Spring yeah. talked to us already. Yeah, um, really like them. So we were like in contact, yeah. And then also we had contact with Imminence already. And I or like at least we talk to each other and I'm looking forward. Maybe at some point we can like play shows together or something. Yeah, cool. That'd be really cool. That'd so I'm amazing. really looking forward to be meeting bands there because uh, there are a lot of bands that I was listening to myself before I even had this band. Uh, for example, Normandy, uh, which I'm really excited to see. Actually, he yeah. also um, reacted to or like commented to Paradise or like followed us, which is so cool to me to see that people find us now. Is it Phil? Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Cool. we're friends with the Normandy boys. Yeah, we love them. They oh, were, that's so uh, cool. Were they the first? They were the first interview we did on the channel. Yeah, they were. Or Chris, Chris Turner was the first, and then Normandy were the first band we interviewed. True. I think. Yeah. So yeah, that's we've cool. got we've got history with those guys. They're a big part of this channel. You know, becoming what Aww. it is now and doing this sort of thing. And it's funny, like every band you've just mentioned was we've discovered through doing this. Like reactions is just. Oh wow. It's just crazy. That's like so the cool. the way that it gives you know, us and the artists a chance to connect. But then I feel like it gives so many more people like an avenue to find new bands. It's it's wild. Yeah, it's super cool. It's also, I don't know how long it's a thing because I don't know if that was a thing a few years before. Like the reaction. It doesn't seem to be. We, so. we, there was a few like guys that were doing reactions that are really big, um, Nick Nocturnal and Alex. The other guy? Oh, yeah. Alex had, yeah. There's a few guys that were doing it already, but it seems to have, become more of like an accepted thing now we started this as just an excuse to hang out and talk about music we weren't really <laughs> trying to be successful in any way um yeah that's cool but it's so good that yeah like johnny said we we get to have these amazing experiences and now we have people that are like discover bands like you guys who might not have found them otherwise and it's really really cool being able to share that and sort of have that really connective experience through yeah us being dickheads on a camera especially all the way in australia <laughs> for us like we're like australia's like a tiny little island just so separated from giant island it's a giant, island. It's a giant it's island. The biggest island in the world but compared <laughs> to giant else, if we feel small <laughs> but anyway Aww. yeah but, so how do you feel about like you know reaction channels with that sort of promotional tool moving forward has it helped you guys out you think yeah, it's uh, crazy to see that people even do reactions. It's uh, always super fun to watch them, as I said before. And I think it does a, does a bit of growth, uh, depending on who reacts, of course. And uh, that's always the fun thing. Like, um, it's hard, I think, for smaller bands to find good channels that react to you. Because, of course, when something is popular, more people will react to it because yeah. it's a win-win yeah, situation. Yeah, because it's YouTube at the end of the day. But uh, so I'm really thankful for, for channels to pick up, like, not as big artists already to react to them and give them a chance and see if they are good or not so to us that's really helpful at the end of the day so of course it gets a bigger audience and also seeing the comments is amazing uh yeah. that other people comment and like you, they talk to you or that even people recommend us to other channels is super helpful and so so nice to see so i think it's personally a really cool thing it's basically like a talk show almost it's it's, yeah. it's like something that could happen on tv but just a new translation of it i think yeah so i 100%. think it's like we we talked about wanting this year to become more of like a music journalism style space but in a new form not just mm -hmm. like oh well music but actually having conversations and diving a bit deeper and having really cool experiences with artists so thank you for being part of that with us which yes. is really really cool we love it yeah this is awesome yes that's amazing i mean so it's similar to like 
what MTV used to do back then or, or stuff like that, 100%. which kind of died now, as, yeah. like at least here, I don't have like TV connection even. So I'm <laughs> really awesome that it's <laughs> a new evolution of um, music. I think it's something, I think it's definitely something that the heavy music scene has needed again, because the pinnacle of yes. heavy music was obviously, you know, MTV had Bangers Ball and all that sort of stuff. And she's young. Oh uh, yeah. Like, well, back in the day, like, <laughs> you know, over here we had Channel V and I, and I really think that it's something that the heavy music scene needed for that interjection of new blood uh, and new fans to, to really just pay attention to how many great bands there are in the heavy scene right now. Yes, and also it helps music videos in general because music mm. videos, as soon as like things as MTV and so on stopped, became irrelevant at some point because who you had to search up a random band and find the music yeah. video or have good luck with the algorithm, and then reaction yeah. channels gave the chance again to give it some relevance again. Yeah, with, for with sure. Having an exciting new music video, and actually, when I was on a video shoot, um, one of the makeup artists said, "Nowadays, with the reaction channels, you have to do something outstanding that is in interesting to see a reaction to. You have to, you have to provoke a reaction, which is funny because reaction channels now even influence the way music videos are made. Yeah, yeah cool. you want to yeah. create reactions. Speaking I mean, of... we didn't do that so far, but yeah. No, you did your makeup." in flames <laughs> yeah with like the black and it was incredible yeah. it looks amazing oh thank you was yeah, that was a process to sit in the makeup chair for that oh yeah that was funny actually i did the makeup and i forgot my mirror which is this one that i always bring to my to the video shoots <laughs> and fun fact was the the forest was uh from a fan of ours it was his own forest wow. because it's really <laughs> yes it is really difficult to record um, at random public places in Germany without having an official license or something. Yeah. Mm. And we were looking for a forest to do like crazy stuff in. And then he he messaged us like, I have a forest, come on there. And then he was the, <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. We were like forest. in his forest. <laughs> Casual, yeah, he doesn't own a forest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was so, it was lucky, like, actually, we were so lucky to randomly f find someone who owns a forest. And then, yeah, I was there and I forgot my mirror and I was like, oh, may do you maybe have a mirror nearby? <laughs> and then he drove home and he came back with like cups of coffee and stuff. And then he oh, had like a so tiny cool. mirror. That was so nice. That's yeah, awesome. It was really cute. Yeah. Yes. But well, yeah, it I think took you've a done while. It. it looked awesome. Was it, was it uncomfortable being in all of that stuff? I, I feel like, it, are these your ideas? Because Let's go back to the paradise clip as well. What was that that was dripping all over you? And was it super uncomfortable? Was it honey? Did you put it on some bread after? Or... So let's one thing. It's not pee. <laughs> That's the first thing. We that weren't going to go I there. Saw but... so many, I saw so many jokes about like, oh, the Berliners and the like sh golden showers. <laughs> I was like, I was like, shit, I didn't even think about that. I was like, oh no. Uh, so you're allowed to make <laughs> that joke. Innocent. We're not. No, you're not. You're a creep. <laughs> now I, I know I did it. I know. But yeah, that was uh, most of the visuals were my idea. Um, I was written down as a creative director or whatever you could identify us. Uh, oh, I didn't yeah. even know that that that's a term for what I do, because usually for our old videos, I even did the scripts. We were doing them with a friend and it made sense because I also write the lyrics and then I have this entire story and I'm like a really visual person compared to I'm not like a really technical person, but a, like a really creative visual person. So I love doing color stuff or like stories and stuff like that. So for Paradise, yeah, I was even doing the um, I was thinking about the set designs. I even have like sketches here still. And then I was doing the outfits for the guys. I was doing our makeup and um, all of that stuff. And the, the golden stuff was actually a bakery mixture or bake oh. mixture. It was like for cakes. And we had a set designer um, there at this day and she was buying that stuff for us. So I don't even know what exactly, what brand or whatever it was, but I had to mix it with some water and actually, there was a problem. It was way too liquidy. I wanted like a really, I wanted it to look like melted gold, basically. Yeah. yeah so okay. like like melting gold was pouring on me, and then it was a lot of li like way too liquidy. But we still made it work somehow. So she had a sponge on top of me, and then just squeezed the sponge, and we had like one shot. And if it didn't look good, we yeah messed it up. But well, it looked great. It I looked amazing. It looked okay. Yeah, it was so good. And, <laughs> Thanks. You know, for us, like the first thing we'd seen of you, it was just such a. 
like the music alone was just fucking fantastic like yeah. hit us like the aggression the cleans but then like the visuals that went with it like like you said it, it invoked a reaction out of us like we were just like holy shit like this is the whole package in one thing it's cool oh job. that's so so <laughs> nice to hear oh thanks yeah th that's also one of our favorite songs or my favorite song it just has so many i think it's like our theme song with the entire message it's like the entire message future palace has like the the hopeful yeah the hopeful message to to your suffering but you're still always trying to fight through it and you are hoping for this future palace future paradise to mm. to, yeah, to achieve at some point and that you can do it and also the contrast of hope and being yeah having fear like the song was supposed to show both of this like a big contrast one scene was like a funeral and the other one was like being in paradise so beautiful and ugly compared i love the contrast of mm. two dramatic things visually that's what yeah, we did there you capture that really well too oh thanks also we worked with um pavel uh, who also did music videos with imminence and um novelist and we, we were looking forward to working with them because we really, really loved his work from, from the Imminence videos. I think they oh, were yeah. amazing. Their they're videos were insane. visually stunning, yeah. Yes. So we were really like excited to work with them. And he also made the best out of the ideas. Um, he did like a mood board together with us. And yeah, we tried to do all we could with our budget, <laughs> mm. basically. Yeah, and I'm really happy we worked with him. So you've got the album coming out in June. We're still a few months away. Is there, can you announce we've got any more singles coming or are you uh, to keep that hush for now? We have a habit actually, of uh, breaking news in interviews. We shouldn't, but. Actually, I don't even know. No one gave me a briefing before this. <laughs> so maybe, much maybe me. there's something new coming. That's fine. We'll just, we could leave it at that. Yeah. But, I mean, it, it would make sense. <laughs> yeah, you like a few that. months. I, I think yeah. that's the thing that's really cool with the way the bands are releasing stuff now is because you've got a long lead up time to before the album comes out it gives more time for people to become familiar and, and more time to discover the band through new singles yeah exactly and also with each of them have a music video or like an own presentation yeah. so it's really cool to show each story of the song and give it like full focus and prime time for for the song yeah, yeah but really... there's we worked on a lot of other things i mean we did an instagram story that we had a shoot as well like a video shoot so you could think about yeah. what might happen yeah, yeah. we've spoken <laughs> about we've spoken about that whole new way of bands releasing things you know they might release four or five six singles and then the album drops and but like i mean it's you're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place because people just want to consume these days especially going through the pandemic like everyone's at home like people just want to consume 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 and the only way to stay relevant and to stay in the public eye as a band is to keep giving them something so yeah it's yeah it's interesting it i think i think it all makes now i feel that i'm like growing up with this new world of technology and how how music works like a new music industry is almost being built right now mm -hmm. with this entire social media world. And I'm like right in there because I, I was a little too young to, I, I mean, I still bought CDs and stuff like that, but it was almost outgrown already when I was a teenager. It was, yeah. it was so quickly, it happened so quickly. I remember I still had an MP3 player and then suddenly I had a phone and then at the next phone and it happened so fast. With, yeah. And then Spotify happened and I was like, whoa, what, what the hell? So yeah. everything is moving so quickly. And um, I think it was Oliver Sykes even saying they don't even want to do album, like album anymore. They don't yeah, want to write albums EPs. anymore. Yeah, yeah. and um, yeah. yeah, I mean, it makes sense with the new, with the new time we're in because people now, I mean, look at TikTok and stuff like that, like super short content and su like a lot of content quick, the, the, um, attention span of people is getting shorter i think mm. and then singles are useful to just pour them out and get get attention right away so this is us this is our song look at the song and love the song and then maybe you might like something like an album but yeah that's it's it's kind of sad to to think about that people might forget to or might lose the entire process of listening to an entire album from the first song to the last I'm not sure if that's going to happen. I hope not, but I'm I'm interested to see how that's evolving. 
Mm. Honestly. Do you, Johnny and I have had this discussion on the channel before. We talked about when Adele released her last album, how you couldn't shuffle through it. You had to listen to it in order. Do you guys put much thought into the song um, arrangement of where they fall in the album? And is it something that you hope that people listen to from start to finish or you don't really mind? Is it play whatever you want? Does it much mm. thought go into that? I first of all thought that was really cool from Adele. I think she she said she wanted to do that, right? Yeah, I'm with you. It's, <laughs> that's it's... my thoughts, and Johnny was disagreeing with that. So, but I think but I see, mean, I come from a different thought. Let her talk. Okay, you go first. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. People um, listen to us ramble enough as is. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> So for our first album, we didn't um, really plan it out to be an album. So we were going in the studio and we were recording a song and we didn't know what the hell was happening with us. And then we got a label deal and they were like, let's do an album. And we were like, okay, we already did three songs. Let's make an album with them. I was like, sure. okay. <laughs> so, I mean, we tried to make it an album, but it wasn't the concept at all. And then with Run, that's pretty much our first ever album album like okay. um yeah so we were more thinking about or at least i was more thinking about a connection with each with each song and with the story and i mean you could probably tell from the single covers that we were trying a lot more to get a story and like a connection with each single um so it's a lot more worthy to listen to it in the right direction <laughs> i don't know how yeah. to say that yeah, in yeah. right That's order right. yeah yeah um but we're still it's still not like a like a hundred percent concept thing like i think thrice if you know them probably my they favorite did like band a, of all time i i love them uh mm. they did this album with the elements back then yeah. i forgot and that is something we didn't do yet we're not even close to that but that's something i really love when artists do that and i think that's really that makes it really exciting to listen to an album for for a viewer or listener yeah um but run is pretty much a a diary so it makes sense to flip through the pages one after one but it's mm -hmm. still a lot of thoughts and it's not like in written book it's like a diary pretty much okay so it doesn't like you know it doesn't and um it makes sense like the last song of the album does have a message and it has like a few parts like how do you say that it's like few uh, it's like block and block and block you okay, know, like a seconds. story for a year and yeah yeah sections exactly oh my god i haven't speaking english for a while actually. i was gonna say by the way <laughs> i had forgotten you have an accent obviously but i forgot that english is not your first language you have flawless oh english my god. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> oh my better god. than us we regularly screw up no. that's all we speak <laughs> oh thank you so much i used to speak so much more english but I haven't. I actually I love speaking English. I don't know. It just feels so nice to connect with other countries and stuff. Mm. But oh, I'm like rusty. I don't know if you. Say no, that. you've done no, really well. well. No, really thank well. You. Perfect. Well, oh, Henry, thanks. thank you so much for taking the time. We have loved thank chatting you with for... you. Uh, also, so excited for Run to come out. So but, uh, excited. We've got a few months to wait for that one. Absolutely, but we will be hanging on, <laughs> waiting, and just thrashing the tunes. We we genuinely do like absolutely love the tunes, so we're stoked we've had this opportunity. Thanks. And um, again, thanks so much for giving us some of your time. Yeah, thanks for giving me the time to speak to show our music, and thanks for reacting to it. We're really thankful, and uh, I was happy to be here. <laughs> our absolute pleasure, and we'll hopefully see you on tour in Australia sometime. In the yes. Future. Make oh, hopefully. I've never been there. I hope. I hope. I'm going to be scared anytime. of the spiders and stuff, but. <laughs> it's always the spiders. <laughs> They're not as bad as you think. <laughs> okay, good, good. I'm excited. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Thanks, Maria. Thank you so much. Thank you.